So you gotta put you in private residences. Don't worry, you'll be here long. Me and the jury will make sure of that. Oh, and if you try anything, I got a big strong man out here. He's waiting for it. See him? There's that shiny bastard. You know what you're doing. Should be right, son of a bitch. Hey, this is a dream. It's just a dream. On your feet, Oki. I'm gonna take you before the judge and hang you. Teach you Oki's manners. Gotta teach you your place. my intention to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Thomas Joe Jr., a known killer who has already served jail term for manslaughter, intentionally and willfully killed George Lance. I will be presenting before the jury evidence that points to Thomas Joe as the killer, and I will present eyewitness who actually saw Thomas Joe murder George Lance. The evidence will c clearly show that this hot-tempered and dangerous individual is a menace to society and should therefore be punished to the fullest extent of the law. Thank you, Your Honor. My client is a cold blood killer. He's just a poor minor farmer who was caught up in a situation beyond his control, and he was forced to unwillingly take the life of another man to protect his own life. I will prove that my client was acting in self-defense and that his actions were totally justified under the circumstances, which will be collaborated by several witnesses and conclusive evidence, proving that my client is innocent and clear of all charges. Ms. Hazel, you may now call your first witness prosecution would like to call to the stand Ms. Nicole Slade. Please rise. Put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I forgot? Mm -hmm. May be seated. Mrs. Slade, did you witness the events that happened outside of Hooper Ranch? Yes, I did. And what exactly the reason why you were there and what happened? Well, I'm a deputy, and we were out to rest in Casey. And when we caught him, this other guy came in to go to school and pick him. And what happened then? Well, then he ran off and Jim Casey was next to him while he was resisting him. Is the man in this courtroom, and if he is, can you please point him out? He's right there. No further questions. Your witness? Ms. Slay, you said that my client struck the first blow, is that correct? This is correct. Your Honor, I'd like to enter this as Exhibit A on part of defense. Mr. Slate, is this the handle Mr. Lance was killed with? Mm -hmm. okay. Ms. Slate, this handle has two sets of fingerprints on it. One set belongs to my client and the other belongs to George Lance. Now, if what you say is true, and my client did strike the first blow, then why was George Lance holding this hand? It's not exactly a police standard issue now, is it? Now why would Deputy Sheriff carry around a handle when he's got a gun? Maybe to terrorize some private workers, perhaps? Mm -hmm. And make it seem like vigilantes, huh, Mr. Slate? Mr. Slate, you said Jim Casey was killed resisting arrest, mm -hmm. right? Yes. 
forensics report shows that he died of massive blood trauma to the head. And the markings on his skull just happened to match the ones on this handle. Which means, according to your story, that he was killed while resisting arrest by a dead man. Since only Lance's and Mr. Joe's prints are on here, and Joe had already fled the scene, according to you. Right? Right. So what do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Slade? No further questions. We will recess until 8 tomorrow morning. Court is missed. Changing your plea. I ain't never gonna change my plea. Never gonna change your plea. I'm never gonna change my plea. You sure about that? I'm positive about that. Back off, Bokey. Never. Never. So I can't do anything to persuade you. Not a damn Nothing thing. Nothing to convince you. Not a damn thing. Gosh, oh, shit. Never gonna change your plea, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coming out here, taking our jobs, our land. And what do you want? You want a free ride, isn't that right? A free ride! Mr. Joad. I heard about what happened yesterday with the sheriff. I think he was a little harsh on you. But he's right. You Okies need to go back to where you belong. You don't belong here. Just... Pack up your stuff and go, and we'll let you be, and you can go on your way. And if you plead guilty today, I'll do my best to reduce your sentence to manslaughter, and you'll only have to serve two years. It's better than going to the gallows. I will not betray my parents or all my people's hope. I'm not going to let you use me to destroy them and grind them into the dirt. Is that your final answer? Of course that's my final answer. Nothing you say can make me change my mind. Well, damn you! Just go back to where you came. I'm gonna, you're gonna get... You know what? Tommy Casey's looking too good. Did anybody see anything about anything at all? Anything? Well, I know we ran through by a few, uh, the shanty towns on our way through the woods when the cops chasing us. They might have seen something, but I can't guarantee it.
they hit him. They hit him real good, right over the top of the head. It bashed him in pretty bad. He fell. He was bleeding pretty bad. Well, the cops, they, they didn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, the fellow that was with Casey, he, he jumped out of the woods and grabbed that pig handle right out of the deputy's hands and smacked him around the head right, real good. Well, as he was falling, he hit him a good another three times until he was out cold. And I was so scared of what they were going to do if they found me, I went running. That's all I saw. Thank you, sir. A testimony of the local Hooverville resident and an explanation about Tom's mistreatment under custody. The judge declared a mistrial. Tom was then sent back to McAllister to finish his sentence. On the way to McAllister, Tom, it was heard that Tom escaped and he has never been seen in California again. Ten years.